Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, FNMs to vote on whether to hold convention this year. This is one former FNM MP doubts party victory in 2017. A man's body fished from waters off Clifton Pier. The government urged to be aggressive with its response to the Zika virus. And of course, we'll check out this week's cutest kids and pets. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MV12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. The Free National Movement's leadership challenges and whether the party will hold a convention have been at the center of national discourse for months now. But party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis is putting an end to speculation, indicating the party will vote on whether to hold a convention. A statement released by the FNM leader last night says at his invitation, the party's National Executive Committee recommended to its Central Council on Thursday that pursuant to the constitution of the party, a full national convention be held not later than November 30th, 2016. In the brief statement, Minnis noted that the dates will be determined by the FNM Central Council and a vote on the resolution to have a convention this year will take place at or before the next regular council meeting. Well, this news couldn't come soon enough as a former FNM cabinet minister is expressing a lack of confidence in his party's ability to win at the polls next year. Former Minister of State for the Environment Fenton Nemore said although he still hopes for the free national movement to win the next general election, he doubts that could happen because of all the recent drama surrounding several party members. Here's Simone Davis with details. Following internal attacks by members of the Free National Movement, Nimor said it could cause the party a win in the next general election. Yes, I do think we still have a chance. Like uh, not with acts like this, though. I do not think this will help us win an election. I do not think the silence of the leadership will help us win the next election. Last week, FNM Senator Lanisha Roll slammed Long Island MP Loretta Butler Turner, stating that the country would not support her as prime minister. Roll also accused members of the FNM of being jealous of the party's leader. That was followed by a firestorm as past and present FNM members called for Roll to resign, while others agreed with her sentiments. This matter also caused South Beach Abaco MP Edison Key to call for party members to stop the infighting and animosity that's going on. Nimor said although the Free National Movement encourages its members to speak freely on pressing matters, he suggested that there must be some type of order established in the party. I think that the Free National Movement must take a serious look at what is necessary to unite. Uh, I do not understand why there is this fight against Loretta Butler Turner or anyone that has differing views. The Free National Movement is built upon the fact that we allow differing views. That's what the word free is in our name for, free to speak. Nemore was one of those who called for Roll to resign, stating that she was out of place. He said the FNM must deal with its issues and quickly if it wants a shot at winning the 2017 general election. These types of comments have made things worse. It has made it more difficult for the FNM. It is critical that all hands on deck uh, as we fight the Progressive Liberal Party, as we fight to put forward our message, as we fight to put together the best possible team. This type of approach doesn't uh, do well. Additionally, for others to support the, that position publicly is even more concerning. Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Simone Davis. In other news, police say a man drowned after he drove his car into waters off Clifton Pier last night. Reports are that shortly after 6 p.m. yesterday, police received reports that a vehicle drove overboard into waters near the Clifton Pier power plant. Police say when they arrived on the scene, they met a 2013 silver Nissan Sentra submerged in the water. A team of Royal Bahamas Defense Force divers removed the body of a dark male adult from the vehicle and transported him to the Coral Harbor base where he was pronounced dead. Police have not classified the incident and investigations are ongoing.
While in other news tonight, opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis has called on the government to take a more aggressive approach to mitigate the transmission of the Zika virus in the Bahamas, noting that the outbreak of dengue fever in 2011 should be the reminder it needs to ramp up its response. He spoke to reporters on Wednesday after Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez announced in Parliament that all the relevant government agencies are on alert and will be closely monitoring all health care facilities and working to mitigate mosquito populations. Minna said it's only a matter of time before the virus is introduced here. Yeah, I think they have to be very much aggressive. The Zika virus is a very serious phenomenon. We have the mosquito here, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same mosquito responsible for dengue. You've seen what dengue did to this country. The virus is already in Trinidad and Haiti, and the virus is in Jamaica. Our borders are opened, which means it's only a matter of time before the virus is introduced here. We have the mosquitoes. Health officials stressed vector control and avoiding mosquito bites as the best way to ward off the virus. Minnis said community education is in also important, and he took note of the strong association health officials have noted between birth defects and the Zika virus, although any link remains unproven. Yes, attempting to eradicate it is fine, but we need a more aggressive approach to go into the communities and have town meetings to explain to them the effect, what will happen, especially to our young patients, the young females. Individuals who have just become married, who become pregnant, they're exposed to abnormality. The abnormality you see are babies being born with small heads, the heads the size of a baby coconut. Meantime, the Department of Environmental Health Services will begin its fogging program on Monday to combat the spread of the Zika virus. That's according to Assistant Director in the Department, Andrew Thompson, who's in charge of vector control. We will, uh, uh, again, um, as part of the intensification efforts, we will uh, start in earnest um, some fogging ex exercise uh, uh, as of, of Monday, but that goes with the weather. If we have uh, rain, if we have uh, um, br um, breeze or, or wind more than 10 miles per hour, it is very useless in trying to apply the, the, the chemical. And so, but again, we, uh, on every f um, front, we are intensifying our efforts, but we invite the public to do the same. But how will a Zika virus carrying mosquito make its way to the Bahamas? Thompson says the Bahamas is home to 29 species of mosquitoes with the Aedes aegypti, the specific breed of mosquito that carries the Zika virus being introduced to the environment years ago. The Baham and that Bahamians continue to provide homes for these carriers means the bug is here to stay. But Thompson says Bahamians can manage the spread of the disease with simple container management. The vector that we are dealing with is the Aedes aegypti mosquito. This, we like to say, it's a domestic mosquito. In other words, it likes to be around human beings. We have provided all of the necessary living accommodations for this mosquito over the years. Uh, the female lay their eggs in man-made containers, bucket, drums, tires, uh, flower vases, derelict vehicles, um, discarded appliances. So a, a myriad, a litany of uh, containers, um, water holding containers are there. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is the same carrier of the dengue and chikungunya viruses that threatened the country in years past, but Thompson said Bahamians should be more concerned about the latest epidemic because of the permanent effects contracting the disease can have on adults and unborn children. He says Bahamians have to be proactive. This is a significant situation, and so uh, whilst we don't have any cases here, we'd like to try to start be proactive in increasing our chances of it not coming. And so ourselves, along with the public, along with other agencies, now this is how it has to happen.